Nations have always built monuments to their heroes, tributes to the defense against or conquest of other nations. But the monument here doesn't favor one nation over another. It is the first of its kind to commemorate the enduring survival of a species, our species. More importantly, it commemorates the man who gave the world faith, who gave humanity a future, who made mankind believe again. Master Chief Petty Officer John 117. So it's no surprise that the piece itself is special. Begun three years ago in 2607, the monument is a diorama built entirely by hand. It is a three-dimensional snapshot of the battlefield and the soldiers who took to it that day. The scene has been reproduced with painstaking attention to detail and authenticity. Only the men and women who were there know it better. Today, we go behind the scenes to see its creation. To ensure historical accuracy, the boot camp induction scans of every Marine involved in the battle were obtained from the United Nations Space Command records. In this way, the artists were able to place the right face to the right soldier. After each face is completed, it is matched to a body which has been rendered complete with uniform and body armor, then carved by hand. It was the artist's vision for this tribute to humanity that each piece be shaped by the hand of man without the aid of robotic model-making systems. Each handmade soldier is posed, painted, and placed on the battlefield, both the victorious and the fallen. Based on topographical maps of the day, the artists are able to replicate each hill, each plateau, and each ravine to near exact specifications. But one of the real marvels is in the cityscape itself. After fighting had ceased, meta-archaeologists unearthed the city's building archives. In them were found perfectly preserved architectural blueprints of every structure in the city. But the challenge was not to merely rebuild the structures, it was to tear them down as well. Artists worked from the city plans to recreate the destruction caused by the fierce fighting, from each bullet hole to each piece of exposed rebar. Finally, our enemies were also rendered with extraordinary detail. Covenant corpses that had been recovered after the battle provided the models for these fearsome recreations. To complete the picture, Authentic Covenant weapons and armor specs were accessed to fully outfit the warriors. Once the Covenant are placed opposite the Marines, a clear image begins to take shape out of the fog of history. We see how we were outnumbered, outgunned, outmatched, and seeing that, we realize the importance of the monument. On that day, half a century ago, our species was pushed to the crumbling edge of extinction. And as we teetered on that precipice, staring down into the abyss, a hand reached out, pulled us back from the brink, and gave us hope. The hand of a hero. Can you tell us what you remember about the battle? We had been fighting for a while, on the seventh day, we ran out of ammo. We had to scavenge all we could from the weapons that had been left behind. The pistols, shotgun rounds, a handful of grenades. Do you remember where you were? When Master Chief armed his grenade, I was in the back of an overturned warthog firing an M41. How did you manage to keep it together? We knew Master Chief was still in the fight. He gave us hope.
I was a sniper. I used a standard high-powered sniper rifle. At 600 yards, it would go through about 13 feet of flesh and bone. What about you? Well, I... I used a shotgun. Could you tell us a bit about that one? Uh, this one, sure. Um, we, we saw a lot of these. This is an old Covenant weapon. It's a spike rifle. We call it the Spiker. And who used it? Well, the Brutes, mostly. Can you show us how it worked? Sure. Um, it was a... They used it as a handgun. That's heavy. Holding an enemy weapon like this as, uh, feels... Uh, I don't like it. If, um, if you'd have told me a few years ago we would be here in this place talking about this, I would have said, no way, it's not going to happen. If there's one reason why we're here, um, I would say it's, uh, <coughs> it's because of the chief. Made by a plasma rifle. This is it. Right here. This is the spot. I bet I can remember every one of these trees. How did your platoon get pinned down here? We got word the Covenant was out here hunting us, and that Master Chief wouldn't be able to rendezvous with us until dawn, so we had to go dark. Uh, it's no helmet lights, no readouts, nothing that will give away our positions. Like rabbits down a hole. Invisible. Do you mind if we turn the lights off? Okay, all right. What happened then? For seven hours, we couldn't do anything. Be still and listen to them hunting us. All we could do was sit. And wait for this to jump. For the first time in 43 years, Lieutenant Shah returns to the site of the battle. What is that? A shell from a sniper rifle. It's amazing there's still so many remnants out here. Where's Master Chief's grave? I don't think anyone really knows. There was a ceremony five years ago, over there. Just as a symbolic gesture. The coffin was empty. Why was the coffin empty? No Spartan could be listed as KIA. They could only be listed as MIA, missing. So it could be said, but no Spartan was ever killed in combat. So the ceremony was tribute, more than a burial. Doesn't look like much. The chief told me once that no soldier should be honored for doing what is expected. Do you believe that? I did, and I still do.